Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record guitars direct in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here, and I want to record a guitar part. I already created the music to go with it, and I've already created a track over here for the guitar. I'll put it into record, set up my input, where my guitar is plugged into. For me, it's input two. And if we go to our track effects over here, we could see I have effects on here already. I have a gate and an amp sim to make the guitar sound like an amp. Without it, it'll sound like this. A very direct guitar sound. That's what my guitar sounds like, just plugged in. But with these effects, it sounds like this. So let's record a guitar part. Now it's important to note, what we recorded is just the direct sound, not with the AM sim on it. Let's take it out of record, and let's hear it without the effects. Again, we just recorded the direct guitar sound, but with the effects turned on, it sounds like this. So by doing it this way, we can still change our guitar sound after the recording. Go to our plugin and change the sim with a preset over here. Something like this. Or this. So it gives us a lot of flexibility as we can change the sound after the recording. But the downside is it's still going to use our CPU processing. So for recording a lot of guitar tracks like this, it's using a lot of processing power from your computer. So a way to get around this is to print the effect. Let's undo the recording. And let's move the track effects, go back into record, to the input effects. So it's going to record the effects on the way in, recorded to the track. Alt on the PC, option on the Mac, and just drag it from here to here. And now the effects are on the input effects, not the track. So now if we record it again, it's going to print or record the effects into the recording, like this. So now, to get a record, there's no effects on the track, but we're still going to hear them over here. Because they're printed on the track. But there's no flexibility with this method. Because we printed the effect, and we can't change it later. It's baked into the audio. So if you want the best of both worlds, let's try a different method. Let's go back to the first recording. Undo all this, and now we're back to the direct sound. And with the plugins turned off, it sounds like this. But again, we have more flexibility now. 
because we could turn them back on and get back that finished sound. But we could change it on the track effects right here. Change our preset. to whatever we want. But like I said, we're now using CPU processing. So if we want the best of both worlds, we could do this. We could select this audio and right click it and choose apply track effects to items as new take. I'm gonna choose mono output because the sound is mono. And if we choose that, it prints the sound based on the effect on the track giving us a new take. Now, if we play it now, we're gonna hear double the effect. And we don't want that. So to conserve our CPU processing, we can go to the track effects, select them both, and right click, and toggle selected effects offline. That removes the processing on this track, but it's still gonna sound finished because we printed it as a separate take. But now we can go back to the direct sound, either selecting it here or typing the T key. And just go back to the track effects and bring them back online, which gives us the best of both worlds. We have two takes, direct and finished and they both sound the same. And if you want to preserve CPU processing, just choose this one and put our effects offline. And we still get the finished sound. But now we could edit our audio seeing both ways. Like for some sounds that are very distorted, we may not see the transients as easily, but we could see it on the direct sound. So we could edit these pieces by splitting them and adjusting their timing, and it's going to affect both takes, the finished one and the direct sound. So it's very useful for editing a guitar. Now, if you use this method, I'd recommend choosing the take you're going to use and right clicking. Go to take and choose to lock to active take. So now we can't accidentally choose the wrong one unless we hit the T key. Then we can switch back and forth. And if you don't want to see both takes at the same time, you can go to the options menu and turn off show all takes in lanes. And now we'll just see one at a time, the one we choose, the direct or the finished sound. But another way I prefer is to make this a stereo file with the direct sound on the left and the finished sound on the right. So let's choose this take, right click it, go to take and choose pan envelope. And we could pan this envelope right here to the left. Then we'll choose this take, right click it, go to take, pan envelope, and pan this to the right. So the left channel is direct and the right channel is finished. Now we're not gonna hear both right now because we're only hearing one at a time. So we should right click the item, go to item settings and choose play all takes. So now we're hearing both at the same time, the direct on the left and the finished on the right. So now we could turn this into a finished file. Right click it, go to render items as new take, and create a stereo file right here. We don't need these two, so let's right click it, go to take, go to crop to active take, and that gets rid of the other ones, leaving us with a stereo file with the direct on the left and the finished processed file on the right. So now, if you want the direct sound, just right click, go to item settings and choose mono left. Now we're just gonna hear the direct sound. 
But we need to turn on the track effects or bring them back online to hear the sound finished. But now if we want to use the finished one with no CPU processing, just put the effects back offline, right click the file, item settings, and switch it to mono right. And that gives us this one. And it takes up no CPU processing. So if you're recording many different tracks in your project and you don't want to use up your CPU, you can use this method creating stereo tracks to work with. Just use the right mono side and it uses up no processing. But if you need to change it or tweak your sound, just right click it, go to item settings, and switch it to left. Turn our effects back on. And we could tweak the sound. So that's pretty much it. That's how to record guitar direct in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. The ice is going to break. Oh!